Join us now for Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated, founded in 1928 by evangelist Paul Levine and dedicated to getting the gospel of Jesus Christ to the whole world. Here today with a special message from God's Word is Mark Smith. Mark is the director of Bible Tracts Incorporated. And now, our Bible teacher, Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. Thank you for joining us here on this, the Thursday edition of Bible Tract Echoes. And I hope you're having a great week and you are finding victory with the Lord. I hope you're spending time in the Word of God daily, personally, and in prayer, meditating, first memorizing and meditating on Scripture. And uh, I hope that you are just uh, seeing and God use you in the lives of others, both believers and especially unbelievers. My friend, I hope you're involved in sharing the gospel. And if you aren't, I've got a, I've got something just for you to help you do that. And if you are sharing the gospel, I've got something for you too. Now listen, uh, I have my Bible open to Psalm 25. We're going to talk about that passage again and invite you to turn there. But while you're doing that, please get a piece of paper and a pencil ready it's because I would like to send you some a sample packet of our tracks at the end of the broadcast, Pastor Ken's going to give the mailing address. In just a moment, I'm going to give you the phone number you can call. I'm going to give you the website address. You can go and use that to get in contact with us. But we really would like to give you a sample packet free of charge of all of our tracks. One of the tracks in that sample packet is called Peace in Terminal Illness. My friend, I don't care who you are, where you live, you know somebody who's dealing with an illness that really, is, they've already been told it's terminal or has their strong possibility of becoming a terminal illness. People do think about death when illnesses, cancer, and other things come along. Now listen, now if they're not a believer, God wants to use that time in their life to draw them to faith in Jesus Christ. Why don't you be the, uh, one of the tools, one of the people that helps accomplish that? Why don't you use this track, uh, Peace in, the, in Terminal Illness, all right? Now, listen, I'm going to give the telephone number right now and the website address. You can use either of those, or you can wait to the end of the broadcast to get the mailing address, and you can use that method to contact us. One way, please contact us. Here's the telephone number, the area code 309-828-6888. You can call us. Uh, we are Our offices are open from uh, 8 o'clock to 4.30 Central Standard Time. The telephone number here in Central Illinois is area code 309-828-6888. Or uh, you can use the website any time of the day or night. The website address is www.bibletracksinc.org. Inc. is I-N-C. All right? One more time, www.bibletracksinc.org. Org. If you've been with us this week, you know that we started off in uh, Psalm 130. We talked about waiting on the Lord. And we used uh, Psalm 130, verse 5, as a springboard into Psalm 25. We've been here now a couple of days, and I want to come here again today and talk about, uh, 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 direct this directly at those of us who are involved in teaching the Word of God. We said that David here is in trouble. We're not been told what kind of trouble, but he's in trouble. And if you haven't heard this week's broadcast, you can go to the website and hear all the broadcasts for this week. They're all there. You can go and repeat them or hear them for the first time. We learned what a pious person was on the first uh, time here in, uh, in Psalm 25. Secondly, we learned that the goal of a person who teaches the Word of God is to develop piety in the life of their students. Now, it's not enough to just teach facts. We must develop the character of Christ. Now, a good teacher is not, does not teach once they've just communicated information. They are teaching. They have been a teacher once the student begins to inculcate and practice what they have taught. So that being said, I come now to Psalm 25, and I ask this question. How do I dare strive to be a teacher of others? How do I dare ever begin to think that I can help others become uh, develop Christ-likeness and piety in their life? Well, the answer is that you and I must first be a good student. Before you can be a good teacher, you obviously must be taught. You must be a good student. Come back with me, please. Uh, I begin, I've, been, I've read here verses 1 through 7 earlier this week. I'm going to begin reading at verse 8. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore will he teach sinners in the way. The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. For thy name's sake, O Lord, pardon my iniquity, for it is great. 
What man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he choose. That he shall choose. His soul shall dwell at ease, and his seed shall inherit the earth. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. Mine eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. Do you get the idea that God's a teacher? <laughs> well, he, of course he is. He teaches sinners in the way. That's why you and I come to faith in Christ. God uses people, whether it be a preacher, whether it be somebody with a gospel track, whether it's a, a somebody in the radio uh, or something, God uses people uh, to help us to understand that we're lost in our sin, and God teaches sinners. Well, God doesn't stop his teaching with sinners. He teaches saints as well. So how do I dare become a teacher, to think that I could ever be a teacher of others on the things of Christ? Well, first, be a student. Here, what are the four things, at least, that this psalm talks about that I will need for you and I to be a good student? Verses 12, 13, and 14, we need to be people who fear the Lord. Go back to verse 12 with me. It says this, what man is he that feareth the Lord? Him will he teach in the way that he should choose. If you go down here to verse 14, the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. He will show him his covenant, fear of the Lord. Uh, a, a often talked about, uh, often well described, but sometimes not so well described idea. What does it mean to fear the Lord? The fear of the Lord is, is reverential awe, yes, but what does that mean? <laughs> it's more than that anyway. Fear of the Lord inculcates into it uh, being afraid of God. Now, don't listen, that, that is a part of the concept of fearing God. We hold God in reverence and awe. We also are afraid of who he is. He's the almighty God, the creator, the one that has the ability to destroy both uh, not just the body, but body and soul and hell. Pretty powerful being, worthy of fearing. But I think let's come down to give a little more concrete idea. To fear the Lord is grasping who he is and how puny I am. By puny, I mean how small I am. Do you realize, let me put it this way, you take the wealthiest person in the United States, I think it's supposed to be Bill Gates uh, of the uh, uh, person of computer fame, very, very wealthy man, and he has earned it. I have no, no problem with him having all that money. But listen, I do know this, you take, all, you take Bill Gates and all of his money that he's earned, and you compare it to who God is in God's wealth, well, Bill Gates is likened unto the poorest person in the poorest country in all the earth. He is, he's nothing more than a, a, a very skinny, malnourished, uh, rag-clothed uh, 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 person in some f horrible place upon the earth where there's hardly any food and it's war-torn. That's what Bill Gates is in his wealth compared to God and God's wealth. You get that picture in your mind and you take any characteristic of God. God's wisdom compared to man's wisdom makes us a, that, that rag-clothed uh, person. Uh, God's love compared to our love, you name it. God's power compared to our power. My friend, fearing the Lord is grasping who he is and how puny I am. Fear of the Lord is grasping his role in the universe and my need to serve him. Gra the fear of the Lord is grasping God's desire to reward and bless people and my need, my desperate need for his blessing. The fear of the Lord is grasping his power to deal bluntly with me if I play games with his truth and his standards. My friend, if you name the name of Christ and I name the name of Christ, and I do, if I play fast and loose with God's truth and God's standards, please understand, God's a fearful God. If you're going to play games with God, know and understand that God will deal bluntly with you and I especially, my friend, if you and I are teachers of the Word of God. Our role to teach is not just to teach in the class setting, but to live out what we teach. The problem is that I, I, the Word of God has so much in it for me to teach that I have not really put into practice as I ought to yet. There's so much truth in the Word of God, and I'm a slow learner. My dear friend, if you're a teacher, you're just like me, aren't you? Well, come back here. Not only do if I'm going to dare to be a teacher, do I need the fear of the Lord, I need meekness. Look at verse 9 of Psalm 25. The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. The meek person is a person who realizes that the circumstances they're in have been allowed by God and brought by God if necessary, but at least been allowed by God, and a meek person stays under those circumstances and, and stays there until God, by his hand, removes the circumstances. Do I like all the circumstances I've ever been in? No. But I do know this. 
that I've not gotten in any circumstance, but what God has brought it or God has allowed it. And God has brought it or allowed it to whittle on my life, make me more like Christ. And so I need to stay there for the glory of God and let God change the circumstances at his timing. The third one, that, that how do I prepare to be a teacher? I've got to have patience. Look at verse 5. Lead me in thy truth and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. The word here is to entwine our lives. It's an active word, but it means that while we're waiting for God to uh, direct us to the next path, to give us the next task, to uh, give us the next assignment in our life, so to speak, that we show patience, but it's patience of us using the time to learn more about him. The fourth one here that I find, at least this, these four, is loyalty to the teacher. Look at verse 15. Mine eyes are ever towards the Lord, for he shall pluck me out of the net. My friend, I, my eyes turn to the Lord. I have loyalty to him as my teacher. Only he can do this for me. You know what God promises a person who has the fear of the Lord, meekness and patience and loyalty? At the promise is verse 14. Look at it. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. God loves to bring illumination. He loves to turn the light bulb on and teach us his truth. That's the ministry of the Spirit of God. Oh, my friend, to be a teacher demands that, first of all, we strive to be a good student before the Lord. Do you know that not only do you, to be a good teacher do you need that, but there are mutual benefits for both teacher and student? If you're a teacher, you get blessed as well as the student. You all know already if you teach the Word of God, the teacher always gets more from the lesson than the student does because there's always things that you've learned that just didn't fit into the lesson plan but that you had the chance to learn. Notice the statement of the benefits for those who are involved in teaching and learning the Word of God. The first one is they're not ashamed, verse 2 and 3. Oh, my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemies triumph over me. Yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed which transgress without a cause. You know, the blessing of being a, a teacher and a student is that you and I can live without having to be ashamed before God, before men. Not only that, we, we can have know about God's tender mercies, and we can have those the tender mercies of loving kindness developed in us. Verse 6 says this, Remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindnesses, for they have ever been of old. My friend, you and I can know about the tender mercies and the loving kindness of God. My friend, verse 7, we have the benefit of the sense of forgiveness. Verse 7 says, Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgression according to thy mercies. Remember thou me for thy goodness sake, O Lord. Do you realize you can understand more effectively the forgiveness and how much you're forgiven if you teach the Word of God and your students can be communicated to of the greatness and the scale of forgiveness that God has done? He's forgiven us of all of our iniquities. My friend, are you listening to me today and you are a sinner and you don't have never received Christ as Savior? Perhaps nobody's ever told you that you are a sinner, but your conscience has told you're a sinner. You know that you've broken God's law. Christ loves you. His loving kindness is great and he's provided a way for forgiveness. He, Christ, died in your place on the cross that you through him can be saved. Make him your Savior today. We're glad you've joined us today for Bible Tract Echoes. Be sure to send your letter of encouragement today, or you may request Bible Tracts. Simply write us at Bible Tracts Incorporated, Post Office Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. That's Bible Tracts Incorporated, Post Office Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. And thank you for being with us today on Bible Tract Echoes. May God richly bless you.